Hello friends, welcome back to Pristine Smiles. Today we are talking about the different suture needles and suture materials used in dentistry. So suturing is basically the joining together of the tissues with a needle and a thread so that the tissues bind together and heal. The main purpose of a needle is to carry the suture material through the tissue with minimal injury to the tissue. If you check the anatomy of the needle, it has three parts. We have the swage, the body and the tip or the point. Let's consider them one by one. If you classify the needle depending upon the presence or absence of the eye, we have the eyeless and with eye. When you say eye as in the thread has to pass through the eye of the needle, so you are going to be having a double thickness of the thread in case of the eyed needles whereas in case of eyeless we have the single thickness. The suture material is sometimes already fused onto the needle and this is what is called as swaging. Swaging is better because it avoids the passing of double thickness of thread through the needle. So this way it is adramatic and it acts like a single unit. This is pre-packed and pre-sterilized by gamma radiation. Next we have the body. The body is the widest portion of the needle. This is the area where the needle holder is placed to grasp the needle. So we have the different types of bodies that are available. We have one by two or half needle or half circle. So this is the half circle suturing needle which is used for suturing smaller wounds. It requires less space but it has more wrist movements involved. 3 by 8 is the one which we commonly use in the oral cavity. It requires less wrist movements. We also have 1 by 4, 5 by 8 and even straight. Now curved needles are better because they can be passed through a limited space. Something which is not possible with a straight needle. So there are two types of curved needles. We have the cutting needle and we have the tapered needle. The cutting needle is used for suturing the skin. It has sharp tips, sharp edges. It passes more easily through the mucoperiosteum as compared to the tapered, tapered needles. The cutting portion extends through around a third the length of the needle and the rest portion is rounded. So cutting needle is ideal for suturing the keratinized tissues like palatal mucosa. Tapered needles on the other hand, they are used for more delicate tissues like for eye surgery or vascular surgery. So we have the taper point which is suited to soft tissue and it dilates rather than cuts. Whereas the cutting versions, we have the reverse cutting, conventional cutting and taper cutting. Taper cutting is mainly used for cardiac or vascular surgeries. So what is the difference between cutting and reverse cutting? In cutting needle, it has two opposing cutting edges and a third edge on the inside curvature of the needle. Whereas in case of reverse cutting, there are two opposing cutting edges and a third edge on the outer curvature of the needle. Suture sizes. Bigger the number, smaller the size. Size relates to the diameter of the thread. In oral mucosa, we usually use either 3-0 and in case of periodontal flap surgeries, we use 4-0. Now these are large enough to allow for easier knot tying with a needle holder as compared to smaller diameter threads. Then in case of soft tissue grafting, I-0 is used. And in microsurgery, we use 6-0, 7-0 or 8-0 because in case of microsurgery, you need a more thinner thread. Then fine sutures like 6-0 may also be used on the face because they cause less scarring. When you classify suture material, you see that they are of two types. We have the resorbable suture material and the non-resorbable suture material. Resorbable as in these are dissolved by the body tissues 
and you do not need to remove them. So there is no need for a second appointment for suture removal. Whereas in case of non-resorbable, these remain in place until they are removed. They are not dissolved by the body tissues. So it is less tissue reactive. And so they produce less scars as long as you remove them on time. Now these materials, they can be further classified as monofilament and braided. Monofilament as the name suggests, it's a single strand. So these need to be handled very delicately. Braided on the other hand, it consists of multiple thin strands which are twisted together. These are easier to tie compared to monofilament. But these have small spaces or interstices between the threads which can be a place where the bacteria can hide and grow. And this can increase the risk of infection. This is called as the wicking effect. Let's check out a few examples of resorbable and non-resorbable. Resorbable is again here further classified as natural and synthetic. In natural we have surgical gut, chromic gut, plain gut. In resorbable, synthetic we have the polyglycolic, polydioxanone and polyglyconate. Non-resorbable natural, silk. Non-resorbable synthetic, we have nylon and polyester. Let's have a look at them one by one now. Absorbable sutures. We first have surgical gut, which is a natural absorbable suture. It is also called as the cat gut because it is derived from the cattle intima. It has a poor tensile strength, poor in vivo knot stability and a high tissue reactivity. It retains its structure well for 2 to 3 weeks and it is used for skin closure. Chromic cut is processed with chromic salts. Now these chromic salts it make it resistant to enzymatic degradation which results in a delayed absorption time. So it is retained, the structure is retained for 7 to 10 days and it is used for split thickness grafts. Now chromic cut or the plain cut, these are packaged in the moist state to preserve the suturing properties. If they dry out, they become brittle and they will not pass through the tissues as easily. So if you are using gut sutures, open it only once you are ready for suturing. It is not supposed to be kept soaking in any solution because the chromic salts will leach out so the tissue resorption will now be faster. Then. In absorbable sutures, we also have the synthetic sutures. The synthetic are preferred because they reduce tissue reactions and they have a predictable absorption. So we, we have the first, the polyglycolic, that is Dexon or Vicryl. Dexon is a polymer of glycolic acid. This is non-toxic coating or it has, it may be uncoated. It is violet or undyed. Vicryl also, it may be either violet in color or it may be undyed and it is stronger than Dexon. Now these two, they have a superb tensile strength, a very good knot strength, delayed absorption. Now how does resorption occur in absorbable sutures? There are three mechanisms. Either there is enzymatic degradation or there is hydrolysis. And the speed of absorption is directly proportional to the vascularity of the supporting tissues. Now this is a continuation from the previous slide. In the polyglycolic, we saw about Dexon and Vicryl. So Dexon was a polymer of glycolic acid, whereas Vicryl is a copolymer of lactite and glycolide. It is manufactured with a coating of polygalactin, 370 and calcium stearate. This coating provides Vicryl its superior handling and smooth knot tying properties. Then we have polydioxanone or the PDS which is a polymer of paradioxanone. Now this has a better tensile strength in vivo compared to Vicryl and Dexon. It shows complete absorption in 180 days. But it has a disadvantage that it is difficult to use 
owing to its property of intrinsic stiffness. Only glyconate or mixon, it has a improved structure and handling properties as compared to vicryl and dexon. I hope you are finding this useful. If you are, then don't forget to comment below and share with your friends if you think someone may find it beneficial. Coming back to the topic, we are now going to be seeing about non-resorbable sutures. In that we first have silk. Silk is the most common one and it is created from protein filaments spun by silkworm. Now this is braided, soft, easy to handle but it also has a disadvantage in it being having the lowest tensile strength. So here we see it is braided and we know the braided sutures they have something called as wicking effect. Okay, they can cause infection. The bacteria they will go and sit in those interstices between different braids and they can cause further infection. But these are non-resorbable sutures. So you are supposed to remove them after 7 to 10 days. If the sutures are removed well in time, then the wicking effect is of little significance. Then what happens is in this suture it is black in color. So it is easier to see. Again, when you cut the sutures, the ends are flat and not pointed. So they are not going to be causing much discomfort to the tongue. Next we have the nylon suture. Now this is a synthetic version of non-resorbable suture. It has a very high tensile strength, low cost, excellent elasticity and a minimal tissue reactivity. But nothing is without disadvantages, right? So nylon shows a disadvantage of prominent memory. So what happens is, it may lead to subsequently more knots being needed to hold it in place. So like maybe for the first suture, you, you, you need maybe two knots to hold it in place. Maybe the third or the fourth suture, you might need three, four, five knots to hold it in place. This can be soaked in alcohol to reduce memory and increase pliability. Now when we are talking about properties, remember three things. The suture should have a very good tensile strength and not stability. Because obviously you do not want it to come out. It should have minimal tissue reaction. Because you do not want any infection surfacing there. And it should have low cost. Now this is for obvious reasons, but this is not the defining factor. Then we have polyesters. Polyesters are condensation polymers of nylon. So in this we have Dacron and we have Ethibond. Dacron is uncoated. It has a rough surface when it is pulled through the tissues. Whereas Ethibond is coated. These are not commonly used because of their higher cost. The coating may crack after the knots are tied. So that's all for today guys. Thank you for watching.